Uh, what's going on people, it's your man the YB, back once again, big shout out to my doggy, Darth Kragius, for coming through and boosting up the coin, so, as you know, Fabius Ordlenius, wait a minute, I, got, I, <laughs> I forgot the bar, wait there, I cooked a bar earlier today, yeah, as I was hoovering the floor in the gym, wage slaving, I cooked a bar for this cat, Peep this one here. Yeah, it's a good one. I ain't gonna lie to you. 100%. Fabius. Wardlenius. Cracker cranium. <laughs> Cracker cranium. Cracker craniumius. 100%. Yeah? Cracker scullyumius. <laughs> Fabius. Wardlenius. Cracker scullyus. Crack a Scullianius. How about that? Bash. That's his new name from now on, folks. You can either go with a Cracker Cranumius, <laughs> yeah, or Cracker Scullianius. Hundred percent. Putting these cats on. You got to be cool. You got. Come on, man. How are you gonna turkey, man? How are you gonna get proper boxing's corny ass in there and not put the YB on? Okay, listen. Has proper got the chat? He got the chat, but the bars are weak. It's the voice that makes them videos. The bars are the standard talk sport bars. Oh, it could, this could happen and this guy's good. I'll tell you straight. I'll tell you straight. That's what I'll do. I'll come on there and set the world alight. Come on now. How many more generic talking heads do you need in this game? How bag of generic. All the talk sport heads now talking about Ben Quitica. Well, I've never been in the ring before, so I don't want to say a fight is quit. I'll tell you straight. Ring or no ring. I'd have to, people. I don't even have to look at a ring to tell you what he did in there. <laughs> what are you, what are you man talking about there? What are you talking about there? Don't make no sense. Oh, I don't want to be disrespectful to the fighters. You jacked. Yeah, and if I jacked, listen. If I jacked, I'd come on here and just say that. What's there to lie about? I'd say, listen, end of the day, man, I went in there. I put my feet in the mud. Because Ben Quitaker, he was trying to fight. I put my feet in the mud. I tried to dig, and it turned out I was gassed and S-H-I-T out of luck. And I didn't want to be in there no more. I didn't want no more. Like Liam Cameron said, I didn't want no more. Liam was right. I'd, honestly, if it was, let's say the YB was in there, not Ben Quitaker, yeah? I'd have to come out. After hearing Liam Cameron say that he was talking to me and breaking my spirit, and telling me that I don't want no more, I'd have to say, listen, I didn't want no more, that's the, that's the truth, I didn't want no more, yeah, I wanted to be out of there, that's what I wanted to be, I wanted to be all up in the crowd, standing, sitting next to Neymar, yeah, my fellow football player, that's what he wanted to be doing, anyway, I've digressed, let's get to the point of today's video, um, Frank Warren, we don't really often get time to, we're so busy, oh, the YB so busy chasing the coin, we don't get much time to speak about outside of AJ, John Fury, Tyson Fury, Usyk, Dubois. We don't get much time to talk about these, the mid-level type dark guys right now. So given Fabio's extreme performance, I'm going to ride on the back of that whilst we can get some squeezing out of it. So I've heard a number of people talk about what's next for Fabio and... They need to be not care. I mean, Frank Warren's good at his job, obviously. He's been doing it since time began. Yeah? He's been doing it since time began. So he's good at his job. But I wouldn't rush him. I wouldn't rush Fabio. Don't Frank Warren saying, oh, I see a world title shot next year. I don't see the, the rush for that. There's plenty of more entertaining fights. I, I don't think, Fa bottom line is, I don't think Fabio right now He's quite a small heavyweight. I think I don't think he's that big. He looks about six four to me, six three, and he's little. He look, I know he's two hundred forty pounds, but he looks more like a Usyk type build. That makes sense. He's not the two eighties. And I guess Dubois is only two fifty, but he's a different. Dubois looks like a different two fifty to me. He looks like a different type of two fifty. Wardley's two forty. Dubois looked like a different two fifty. Bacoli, Zhang, Cabayel. There's no rush for Wardley. Wardley's extremely exciting. And he's still learning. That is one of the very few guys I'd say I'm going to give that excuse of still learning. He's earned that. Yeah, he's earned that because he's shown he, in the first fight 
he made a hash of it essentially in the rematch he's come out spark on it not playing no games that's real learning this isn't that AJ learning the AJ learning's like he looks the same he looks crap every time think about it they was telling us he was learning but we weren't seeing that we weren't seeing no learning when he was in there with Bum Lenius. He was going life and death until he found the right hand. That's not learning, though. That's a, that's a lucky shot he got on Hellenius. He didn't break Hellenius down. He didn't break Hellenius down. He didn't get in there and set about Hellenius, Bum Lenius. You got Wardley in there with Olympic silver or bronze medalist, Fraser Clark. Just sets on him like a feral dog. Then you got AJ, who's had all these 10 million years of learning and training and learning. And he's in there faffing about with Hellenius for seven rounds, right? He should have been st with someone like Hellenius. You go straight in there on him. Faff around for what? That's what Wardley did with Clark. Now, even if you... Can we say... Uh, uh, I think it's fair to say Clark and Hellenius are probably the same level. Right? They sort, you can't say Clark's worse than Hellenius. If anything, we'd like to think, probably. I wouldn't bet on it, though. But you'd like to think Clark would deal with Hellenius. So the point is... Why is it AJ's in there faffing around with Hellenius for seven rounds? Faffing around with Franklin for 12 rounds? In there with five rounds of Wallen faffing around? So that's why I'm giving Fabio the benefit of the doubt. He hasn't got a big amateur background. Not that that counts for anything with me. The amateurs are done for me now. I don't think there's any point talking about the amateurs no more. I can't tell me the last amateur fighter who did something. Seriously. You've got to go back to 1929 with Alexander Usyk. That's what you have to go back to. The amateurs, Canelo, he ain't no amateur. Peterbiev and Bivol, I don't, I don't think Bivol did nothing in the amateurs though. I don't think Bivol was Olympic medalist. In fact, I don't even think Peterbiev was, to be honest. Peterbiev Olympics. Let's have a look. I think Peterbiev got beat by Yuzik in the Olympics. Yeah, so Peterbiev isn't a medalist. Bivol isn't a med medalist. Oops. Canelo wasn't, Triple G was, but then Triple, oh, I'm skeptical, of, Triple G got beat by Carrot Top, and he, right, he got beat by Carrot Top, a dude who came straight out of the mud at 17 or 16 years old fighting in Mexico, so there's not really much solid evidence that the amateurs is really going to do something for you, and really Triple G style translated well to the pros, right, he wasn't just faffing around, but all these faffers, let me tell you about the faffers right now, Ben Quitaker. Josh Kelly, um, AJ, Audley Harrison, who else you got? There's, there's other ones in Tony Oka. All these Olympic faffa top top faffers. Don't do Fraser Clark. Yeah, all these top medal cats. It don't mean nothing when it comes to the fade, the real fade, the professional fade. They all fall apart, so they can forget about the amateurs. But still, he didn't have an Fabio Wardley didn't have an amateur background, so that can only lead in his favour. And hence, he should spend. For me, Fabio yet yeah, should spend the next two years. How old is he though, Fabio? Let's have a look. They say heavyweights don't really come into their prime until they're 30, 31, 32. Fabio Wardley, age twenty nine. Bash. So. He had no amateur background. He's not like Daniel Dubois, who started at 10, 5 years old, yeah, and went pro at 16 and all that kind of thing. He's not like that. He started, what, 5 years ago or something. And he does have things to fine-tune. So I don't want to see him in a world title shot in a year from now. Because I don't think there's nothing sweet up there. I think even if Usyk chose to fight him, it would slap... Wardley's head off. Wardley wouldn't know what what was coming and going. He just wouldn't know what was coming and going, in my opinion. I'd like not mind seeing it though, because Wardley would have a go, which is something no one has ever done. But you'd like to, well, use it. I'd like to think would handle Wardley, obviously. Um. Uh, Fury and Wardley. Well, I'd, I'd watch that as well. But I'm talking more about the up and comers. Bacoli, Zhang's old and no gas, but Bacoli, Zhang, and Dubois and Caballero. Parker, Parker's not a bad shout, because Parker can't punch, but still, there's better fights for Wardley, you see Frank Warren said, we've welcomed a fight with Jared Anderson, now in my last video I mentioned, I don't really think it's right that winners should fight losers, it should be a, a battle off, 
It should be a, a Saudi Arabian shake-off. Yeah, a freak-off type event. Where the losers have to freak off with the winners. Sorry, the losers have to freak off with the losers. And the winners have a shake-off with the winners. That said, Wardley hasn't really been in that mix. Anderson just got punched up by Bacoli. He hasn't really broken into that. The mix right now is people like, well, it's Ben, Dubois, AJ, Fury, Usyk, Zhang, Parker, um, Caballel. Those are the guys who have been in the Saudi mix like that. Wardley's been really cleaning up the British slate scene. So, Wardley versus Anderson, that's a banging fight. That's a 50-50 fight. And I guess the argument against my sentiments of not having winners versus losers is that the losers are hungry. They've got something to prove. Anderson's got something to prove at this point. But then you could have two losers together who really have something to prove. If Anderson lost to Wardley, you could say, well, Wardley's on right now. Put Anderson in there with Andy Ruiz. And if I was Turkey, I'd tell him, hey, we're doing Andy Ruiz versus Jared Anderson. And the loser, you can just get out of here. If you, especially if you don't fight. If a loser comes in there, like Andy Ruiz again, don't do nothing, get him out of here. See you later, man. 100%. Go sit down somewhere. Because I ain't trying to hear no more from Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz always with the excuses. Oh, I'm the first unified Mexican champion, and I, but I couldn't be bothered to train to defend my belt. Oh, it got to my head. Get out of here, man. Oh, I hurt my hand, but my hand wasn't hurt for the first six rounds. Yeah? And the thing is with boxing, when you hurt your hand and you're in a fight, the adrenaline... You, you get through that. You get through that, man. Come on now. I've seen Chris Eubank with an eye like this, broken orbital, orbital, get cracking on. So don't tell me, with, when that adrenaline's flowing, that hand, man, you just throw it the same way. You just throw it. And then after the fight is when it all burning. During the fight, you think, let's, 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 all the old heads did anyway. Let's carry on. I can't remember. Tell me, I'm not a historian, but tell me an old school fighter, yeah, who hurt their hand and then just flapped the fight doing nothing. I haven't heard of it. And then old school man was hitting hard. I never hear any of them complaining about, oh, well, I had to give up the last six rounds because my hand hurt. I've seen Danny Williams with his arm dislocated having a go. Yeah? So don't give, this is new age. Oh, my hand hurt. It's a fight, man. Chances are in boxing, you're going to end up catching your hand wrong and it's going to hurt. It sounds foreign to boxing virgins, but that's the truth. And at this level, when you're making multi-millions, yeah, I'm not being funny. And you're making... Andy got, what, probably two mil for that fight? Certainly one. When you're making one to two million dollars for a fight, come on now. You don't sit in there, sitting back saying, oh, my hand hurts. If your hand hurts, you can afford to take the next year or two off. You're better off getting through it and winning. That's that's more valuable to your, um, to your life, unless you're soft, which is what I believe Andy Ruiz is, ultimately. He's always, he's always got the excuses, which is... It's to be expected from bulbous cats. Yeah, bulbous cats, they always with that kind of stuff. Oh, it's not my fault. It's, I'm big boned. You see that one there? Oh, my metabolism's slow. They've always got something. You eat too much. Yeah? I've never seen no bulbous Donny eating a bowl of rice a day. You see that one there? That doesn't make no sense. If it's about genetics, if it's solely genetics and solely big boned, then why don't we see Donnie's living on bowl of rice a day, bulbous? Because if you're right, <laughs> nothing to do with genetics, man. You eat too much. You eat too much. Oh, it's not my fault. I drink too much water. <laughs> What's that doctor's name? There's, some do um, there's a doctor, this old... I'm not sure where he's from. He's, it might be South American, but it's some old... Dr. Oz? No, it's not Dr. Oz. And he... he, 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 he he's on this programme... Something like, it's a 50 stone program of all the 50 stone big birds. And they go in there and he says to them, what are you doing, man? You're putting weight on. And like, well, actually, I, I had a big drink glass of water before I came and he just cuts into them. You know, that man's funny. Anyway, I've digressed. Forget about Andy Ruiz. Although, Wardley versus Ruiz, that works too. Wardley versus Ruiz, Wardley versus Anderson. On the flip side, those are the losers. The winners, obviously, Jerome Miller. You know what? I, I feel sorry for Joe Joyce as well. I do. I don't know what, how he, I guess he got beat by Chisora, but even before that, even before he got beat by Chisora, he hasn't got a look in edgeways into this Saudi game. So I, I understand Joe Joyce is with Frank Warren, and Joyce was never Frank Warren's favourite for some reason. It's always been weird. Joe Joyce was WBO mandatory. 
and Frank Warren signed him up. I think possibly Frank Warren's got it out for Joe Joyce in as much as, oh, you beat my... It feels like Frank Warren's been trying to punish Joe. Putting him in there. Joe Joyce was WBO mandatory. All he had to do was sit back and do nothing. Now, of course, at the time we were all saying, I was probably saying, I think he beat Zhang, maybe. I'm not even... I'm, I, don't, I definitely didn't put no money on it, though. I thought it was a 50-50 fight, so I couldn't have been that gas because I bet on... Joyce to beat Parker, but I didn't bet on Joyce to beat Zhang. Um, anyway, what I'm saying is, Joyce, at that point in time, the game's changed a bit now, but Joyce, at that point in time, had done enough to justify a world title shot. And he didn't get even close. They put him in there with Zhang. They put him in there with Zhang, and the rest is history. But knocking out Joe Parker, popping Joe Parker's cherry for him, that deserves something. And instead of being brought into the Saudi leagues, no one talks about him no more. No one talks about him no more. And Fabio Wardley versus Joe Joyce is, would be another British banger. If that makes sense. And thinking about it next year, you could have that on the... Um, AJ versus Fury Battle of the Bums card. The Battle of the British Bums card, which is no doubt coming. After Usyk finishes with Fury, Turkey will come back to London in March and he'll do a Battle of the British Bums. The leftover washed up bums. Yeah. Usyk, 100%. And the show will be called, called Riyadh Season. The Battle of the British Usyk Leftover Bums. That's what they'll do with that one. And you could put that on the undercard. Wardley versus Joyce. Because that would be another highlight real knockout. I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to be honest. Wardley, especially that right hand he likes to sling. We know Joe can't get out of the way of that. But Joe deserved to get paid is what I'm saying. He's given enough brain cells for me. To earn, to be in the mix somewhere. I'm, I'd rather people say, no, Wardley versus Chisora. No, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Chisora, he might have beat Joyce and I... Better fiver on that to happen. But still, uh, Chisora's, uh, I don't like that. I've seen Chisora in there with Joe Parker who can't punch. And Chisora was cowering into the corner. Chisora was even cowering into the corner against Joe Joyce in a fight he was winning. You don't want him in there with Fabio Wardley. Something serious, 100%. I believe Wardley could do Chisora some serious harm. He's quite tall, Wardley. Uh, yeah, he could do Chisora some serious harm. And again, Chisora will come forward at times. Chisora's gas tank's gone, though. His gas tank has gone. He was in there fighting like 30 seconds of a round with Joyce and just in, cowering on the ropes. And you That's one thing, that's one place you can't be with. Um, Chisora got away with being on the ropes with Joe Joyce because he's so slow. And he made, Joe Joyce made Derek Chisora look like his name was Floyd Imad, Bruce Lee, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> That's how he... Chisora was on there just rocking and rolling, licking him with the right hand. But with Wardley, if you go back to the ropes with Wardley, he's going to make you hold something. It could be a swing out, but I just don't... I don't like that. I don't like that. And besides, I want to see... Chisora has been milking the game for a while now. There's no one Chisora hasn't fought apart from AJ, really. He's got all of the fight, all of the big money fights. Klitschko, Fury, three times. Usyk, Parker twice. Dillian White, two or three times. He's been paid. Joe Joyce hasn't. And let's see. Joe Joyce, he went down against Chisora, but he is relatively sturdy. He's done enough in his pro career to say he's better than Clark. Right? So why not run that one? I'd rather see Wardley versus Joe Joyce. It has more commercial value. In the UK at least. Then again, Wardley might be at the point of his career where he's trying to make a name for himself in the States. So you've got to do that with Jared Anderson. All in all though, whoever it is, they're all... Fabio style, when someone comes to fight and when someone comes to swing, it don't really matter what they're doing. And there's so many fighters today who, in the heavyweight division, Jarrell Miller, Jared Anderson. Jared Anderson's feet are pretty slow, right? He's not a dance-arounder. 
He's not a Tyson Fury 2.0, if that makes sense. Just trying to faff around. Jared Anderson, he's pretty much stuck in the mud. Jarrell Miller, he is stuck in the mud. The slowest feet ever. Joe Joyce shot, so his legs are slow, naturally, by definition. All these fights are great. Andy Ruiz, feet are slow and don't really want to fight. But I don't I don't really want to see Andy Ruiz, if I'm honest. Although his his quick hands, the twitch, the ping of his hands could make it interesting. But I don't think Ruiz can punch. Ruiz didn't hurt his hand until round six. And he didn't. Miller was all over him. But has Wardley been hit by Andy Ruiz yet? No. Fraser Clark is not an Andy Ruiz. Fraser Clark can't punch for Toffee. Fraser Clark can't punch for Toffee. Nathan Gorman can't punch for Toffee. These are all documented facts. Nathan Gorman can't punch. Clark can't punch. And Adelaide is no good. So Andy Ruiz would be, no doubt, the hardest wall has been hit and the quickest has been hit. And the most proficient, complete pro fighter he's fought by miles. All these guys are hype jobs, essentially. Clark hype job. Adelaide hype job. Gorman just washed up and was never no good. Anyway... Exciting times for Wardley. Just take it. He deserves the easiest challenge, Joe Joyce, right now. Get some... Um, go in there with Joe, yeah. Just, I don't know. Maybe he shouldn't have a look, actually. Yeah, Wardley should just set about people, really. Go in there and just set on them. Like a rabid dog. That's what he should do. And he, I think he, I'd back him to... I'd probably bet money that Wardley knocks Joe Joyce out. That's what I'd have to do. Which is a shame, really. There was a day where I... I I never thought Joe Joyce would get knocked out, but he became the classic boxing cliche. Your chin's rock solid until it ain't. When you're in the thick of it, you think, nah, there's no way it's ever going to happen to him. Oops. Big bang, gotta bang you. Big bang, dang. 100%. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Who would you pick for this? Um, Anderson would knock him into next week. I prefer Joe Joyce. Woodley can light Big Joe up and look sensational. But yeah, that, that's my base case as well. Give Joe Joyce a farewell song. Oh, listen, I'm I'm happy for Joe to win it. But I do think Joe should be given another chance. He lost against Chisora. This will be his... I'd tell Joe as well. If I was Frank Warren or Turkey, I'd tell Joe, hey man, this is it now for you. Yeah, you lost against Chisora and we, we're giving you another shot here. You've got to make this work. Otherwise, forget about it. But Joe Joyce is an entertaining fighter. He gets hit. He comes forward. We can't be hypocritical here. We can't complain too many dudes are running. Even after Joyce got put down against Chisora, he got up and was still trying to make a fight of it. He's so slow, though. He's been he's shot now. Joyce, Joyce was always slow, but he's even slower now. He's lost all the timing as well. Remember when the days when he was busting someone up with a jab? I don't even know what happened to that jab. That jab was lethal at one point. And it's just fell off because he's neurologically compromised. Which is sad to say, but listen, he's got bills to pay. He's got bills to pay. So, the boxing establishment, we've just seen a whole bunch of fighters not really want to fight in there. Bivol, don't really want to fight in there. Who else was there? Um, <clears throat> trying to think now. Whitaker, not really want to fight in there. you got to give Joe Joyce the opportunity, I believe, to redeem himself or not. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Smash the like button, subscribe. Lack off the bell, 100%. No doubt about it. People, stop it.